heavy snow and strong winds that are expected to impact 18 states. Six states under a blizzard warning. The Rockies facing a major temperature swing from record highs in the 80s to dangerous whiteout conditions as the blizzard will be at its height tonight through Thursday. Just trying to get through the blizzard. Yeah, I mean, check it out. It shouldn't be a huge deal. We're up here <clears throat> where the S is. And the words severe storms, that's way over here in Nebraska. I'm headed up into Wyoming's snowy range. Snow conditions permitting, we can get up to like, I don't know, maybe close to 11,000 feet and get above the tree line and into the mountains proper. And I'll be traveling on skis today. I cashed in my Nordic AT setup, which is based on a waxless full metal edge Nordic ski, uh, but it had AT bindings, some DinaFit bindings mounted to them. And then I used some one buckle DinaFit racing boots. That's a great combo for steep downhill. I'm not expecting a lot of steep downhill today. So I've, I've swapped out a setup that is far more comfortable for touring. I took the DinaFit bindings off my waxless skis and mounted a manual Nordic BC triple N binding on it. And then my Nordic boots are the Alpina Alaskas, which, you know, I think is probably the best Nordic boot on the market. I did tons of research before settling on this setup for efficiency of touring. It's a more efficient touring than a Telemark setup. Uh, you just don't have that free range of motion with a Telemark setup. And especially if you need to do any downhill, you kind of have to have a cable binding if you're going to try to power through crud at all. And the nice thing about the Nordic BC Triple N standard is that there's grooves in the bottom of the boot that mates to ridges in the binding. And when you flatten the boot down onto the binding, it gives you um, the ability to kind of lock in and really put some pressure on the metal edges and and carve through some crud. So that's why I have that set up today. But again, it goes back to the efficiency of touring. It's my, my favorite setup for that. Okay, let's head up into the mountains. liters of water so take out the water and you're looking at uh, 29 pounds and you know there's five pounds of camera gear in there and some ski gear like skins and I brought too much food because I wasn't planning but yeah let's do it Okay, so I parked down the road about 25 minutes ago and I've been skiing up the snow along the side of the road. Now we are at the end of the road. It's closed from here, so we are on a snowmobile trail and I'm ho really hoping to take that trail for a couple hours because we can move pretty fast on that. Temperature is pretty warm. It's about 40 degrees right now. 
um, I'm tracking it so I'll put the actual temperature on the screen I'm using the Kestrel drop I have two of those today because I'm using them to monitor inside and outside um, environmental conditions of my tent that I have the snowmobilers are all going home very light snowmobile traffic today uh, it's it's kind of spring conditions and and there's no more powder so uh, the last of them will be leaving here as we head up the road probably in the next uh, hour or so and we'll keep going and we'll have this place all to ourselves tonight wind is blowing pretty good right now there's a couple sleds coming right here so I'm gonna get out of the way the wind is blowing pretty good right now, so let's see where we're at. They're so loud. That smells like gas. Yeah. It's not not for me. Unless I can get a ride from a snowmobiler up to ski some backcountry, then I'm down with that. I know, no principles. Now the wind stopped. So here's our Kestrel. It's blowing steady between 10 and 15 miles an hour right now. So not too bad. But once we get up near the tree line, it's gonna be a different ball game. We'll keep this handy and keep you posted. We've been gone for two hours and 15 minutes or so. Now I'm ready to grab a bite to eat and, and drink a bunch of water. It's really windy uh, out in the open, so I stopped here with uh, some tree break here. You can see behind me that's the direction the wind is coming from. And uh, that way I can get out of it and still be in the sun so I can stay uh, warm. Temperature's definitely dropping. The snow surface is really hard, crusty. We left the snowmobile trail and it was really slick. I still don't have my skins on and we've done a fair bit of elevation so I'm, I'm well above 10,000 feet. Um, I'll look it up at this location and, and put it right down somewhere on the YouTube. Oh look, there's a black capped chickadee. You won't be able to see it with this camera. Sorry. I sit down and get some food. I'll figure out where I'm going to go look for a campsite tonight. You know, I think I'm going to head through the through the woods that way. Doesn't look like I'll need skins right now. This, there's actually new snow on the surface up here, uh, about a half an inch or so, and my skis are gripping pretty good. Uh, but I did bring skins for the steep stuff, so we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm going to eat. lunch I have Thai chili lime cashews from Trader Joe's, a couple of Hershey's special dark chocolate bars, and some chili cheese Fritos. So 
So my favorite meal on the trail in the winter is generally about 400 calories every two hours. And uh, I usually mix that up with nuts, chips, and chocolate. Those three things, really simple stuff. That's what I eat when I'm uh, moving. If I know I can stop for a longer lunch, I like to have some salmon. Maybe even some bread. Okay, let's look at the map. So it looks like I'm on an old roadbed actually. And I'm gonna try to side hill up off this roadbed and try to intersect a summer trail that then climbs a series of benches to a glacial cirque. And then maybe we'll look for a place to camp up in the cirque. It should be really pretty up there right up against the mountain. So I think I'll drink some water and head out. That was horrendous. The fish scales do not grip at all on this. It's terrible. I should put my skins on. I think this is it though. We're on the summer trail corridor, so at least we have a path. Okay, that's it. I'm putting my skins on. So we're starting to climb now. So I just have a pair of kicker skins with me. They only cover the middle of the ski. A little bit more efficient to ski with them. They're lighter, obviously, because you don't have to carry the whole length of the ski. Minor black diamond. Climbing skins are used to help climb in skis. So the idea is when your ski is sliding forward over the snow, it glides smooth, but prevents the ski from gliding backwards. Like it's hard to rub my hand this way. The skins are made of little fibers that are oriented in one direction, kind of like teeth. So smooth that way, rough that way. The fibers are 
facing down like that. And as you can see, my skins only cover the middle portion of the ski. They're called kicker skins. So I like taking kicker skins instead of full skins when I'm alone because if I take full skins, I might be tempted to go into steeper terrain and get into avalanche terrain, which I really don't want to go into when I'm alone. So if I start sliding on kicker skins, then I know I probably got to be uh, careful because it's an indication that I'm in terrain that's probably too steep for what I am comfortable with being alone. Okay. And the temperature is also dropping. I'm trading my power stretch gloves for my ski gloves, which are fleece insulated and have Gore-Tex shells. And they are much warmer. Evening is here. The sun is behind the clouds. So it is starting to get chilly. Okay, on we go. There's our first hill. It's starting to snow and Clouds are coming down in, so that's pretty exciting. Makes me wonder what's in store for us this evening. This is very interesting terrain. We're up on a bench, so I don't know exactly where the trail corridor is, but it looks to be up this slope, along this slope. So we'll just kind of hold the contour, I suppose. There's a big lake down there. Steep slope and cliffs below us. We're traversing a contour above those. Pretty rowdy weather as we climb higher though. We are following the lion tracks. They are fresh, definitely today's tracks, and not very old. Hopefully, we won't see them. Check the map again. And we are pretty close to the lake, so we're going to head up this drainage. And that's just about going to put us there. So much nicer skiing uphill with the skins. What a difference. Saves so much energy, especially on this crappy snow.
Okay, here's home for the night. Good views, nice breeze. Now I gotta go cut eight dead men anchors. Find some dead wood. I saw some dead wood uh, standing up as I came in. So I'll go cut those with the new Sulik 46 buck saw. 4.6 or 4.8 ounces, something like that. It's incredible. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but I'm sure it's some Inuit name or something like that. lot of spin drift <coughs> coming in so I think we're gonna have to shovel that wall back there otherwise we're gonna have a tent full of snow so that's my next task right now okay it's cold a lot colder than I thought it was going to be, so I need to get warm. I'm going to set up my bed, crawl inside and warm up before I start cooking. So 
So far, so good. Just blew another stake. So, big gust. I gotta go fix it. Okay, we had a failure. My trekking pole busted through the grommet right there on a wind gust. So that's that's problematic because now I got no way to support my pole there. I am camped at about 10,800 feet in Wyoming's snowy range in southeast Wyoming. Um, just a little, little ways away from Medicine Bow Peak. I'm sleeping. Well, I'm not sleeping. <clears throat> I'm camping. Uh, I did have a tent failure, um, but we're pretty much just riding out the storm. Um, gusts, the, the highest gust I've measured That's in the 40s there. The highest gust I've measured blew the tent over and caused the failure um, a few hours ago. No, an hour ago, I don't know. Uh, that gust sounded like a freight train in the 60s. Anyway, everything's holding up okay right now. I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty long night. My backup plan if the tent does not hold up. Whale. Probably pack up and try to... I don't know. Head back down. Go to the car. <laughs> It'd be a couple hours of hiking, maybe two or three hours. Probably three hours, maybe even four in the dark. It was pretty difficult to navigate up this far through the uh, forest. And then I have to go back down through that. So I'd like to ride it out. But yeah, if I have to, I will go find all this sand, maybe 500 or, or so feet of elevation and hunker down the trees and Bivy, build a fire, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. I'm not expecting to do that. I'm really hoping the wind's gonna die down. I'd really just like to settle in and go to bed. Meteorologist here down here with the National Weather Service in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Satellite imagery this morning. We have a well defined weather system across the Mountain West and Utah, and this system will continue to get it back together and strengthen across Wyoming and Colorado late this afternoon into tomorrow. Blizzard warnings in effect for the Nebraska Panhandle and into southeast Wyoming. Alright, it's 
tent has blown down again. It's getting worse. So, I'm gonna pack up and head out. Uh, it's too exposed here, so it's time to go. <laughs> Okay, it's after midnight, snowing, white out, dark. I'm navigating totally with my GPS right now. So we're going to take a different way back and try to find a road. Uh, the way I came here is just not something I want to do in the dark because it's traversing a steep slope over been able to see uh, it's just not a good idea so we're heading through the trees and down a drainage and hopefully at the bottom we'll intersect a road made it down to the road now so the hard stuff's out of the way now it's just slogging i still have several miles to go so it's going to be a late night but i think i'll head back to the truck and find a place to boondock and catch a few hours of sleep before daylight. <clears throat> well, that was a trip. Oh my goodness. Find a place to sleep. 